That is a large caterpillar. Well, if I've got your shadow in it, then we can kind of see how large the caterpillar is. <laughs> It's day five on the Speyside Way, the final leg of our hike, and we've woken up to a beautiful summer morning. Now half of you will be saying, wait a minute, the last video finished on day three, what happened to day four? And the other two of you won't even know what I'm going on about. But here's day four. We started in Craig Ellicky near the brilliantly named village of Maggie Noctata, and climbed over the biggest hill on the route before dropping back down to the valley and ending in Fockabers, near the brilliantly named village of Dipple. In all honesty, I didn't film very much on the morning of day four because the walk is densely forested and you spend most of the time just looking at trees. But when you do finally get a view at the top of the hill, it's worth the effort. See the oh really? Yeah. Standing in the middle? Yeah. The second half of the day follows a long, straight country road and, well, it's not the most interesting part of the route either. There are a few nice views across the valley but frankly, I feel like it could do with some old disused railway stations to spice it up. Problem is, since the path left the route of the old railway line at the end of day three, the supply of old disused stations has really dried up. But don't worry, on day five, we'll be back on where there used to be track. So, back to Fockabers, and as we leave the town, we pass under the old road bridge over the Spey. This started life as a stone bridge, but two of its arches were washed away by a flood in 1829, resulting in this weird half-stone, half-iron remix. The sheer amount of scaffolding on it probably explains why most people now use the new bridge. On the other side is a bus stop which stands on the site of Fockerbys Railway Station, which used to be on its own branch off the main Aberdeen to Inverness line. It was closed in the 1930s and is now a nothing. Anyway, back to the Speyside Way, and weirdly it's now a cold winter day. Which is what happens when you decide to make a three-part series about your summer trip, then realise that you haven't got anywhere near enough video for part three, and end up going back to film the missing bits six months later. If it's alright with you, I'm going to carry on talking while the video flips wildly between summer and winter, and we're going to go ahead and act like it's all totally normal. To be fair, if you've ever experienced Scottish weather, it's just going to look like a typical day. Our route for day five takes us from Fockabers all the way down to the mouth of the Spey on the Murray coast, where you'd logically expect the path to end. But despite being literally called the Speyside Way, it kind of forgets to stop and instead wanders on along the coast for about five more miles before ending up in Bucky, where coincidentally there are several pubs. Because not many people come along here in the winter, the walk down to Spey Bay is basically just a series of startled animals until you get to a signpost. This marks the point where we cross the disused Murray coastline. Until the 1960s, local trains used to trundle along here, linking all the little fishing villages along the coast. There's not much to see from the Speyside Way itself, but a short walk in one direction takes you to the old Spey Bay station, which is now a private residence, and a short walk in the other direction brings you to this. The Spey Viaduct spans an impressive 300 metres, which makes it easily long enough to cross the river, with plenty of room to spare on either side. The reason they built it so long is so it can cope with any potential storms and floods. While the water is beautifully blue and calm today, <coughs> beautifully blue and calm today, this is northern Scotland after all. It isn't always like that. Back on the Speyside Way, it's not long now before we reach the point where we have to say goodbye to the river that we've been following for the last five days. And as the Spey hits the beach and spills out into the North Sea, it feels like a good opportunity for a photo. I'm not sure why we picked this exact spot, but it is a particularly nice location for a drain cover. From here, the path turns sharply right because, you know, there's a sea in the way. 
This section goes past a recycling and waste management centre. And if you remember the shortbread factory from day three, well, this is very much at the opposite end of the perfume spectrum. Luckily the path soon leads back to a long flat straight on the old railway which means you can walk quickly and with a fresh breeze coming in from the sea you soon get away from the smell. In fact, we're not the only ones who've come up with this idea. It's quite speedy. The thing is, if the caterpillar is that large, how large is the butterfly going to be? Make a valid point. Next up is the tiny fishing village of Port Gordon. And compared to all the other pretty little port towns along the Murray coast, this place feels a little bit... bleak. I think it's a combination of the fact that there's no one really around, the beach is made of concrete, and the harbour somehow manages to look a bit like a funeral. Well, hopefully at least there's a nice old railway station for me to look at. Oh. Well, never mind. With Port Gordon behind us, we're now on the final stretch into Bucky, and the end of the Speyside Way. After five days and 107 kilometres of walking, it's quite an emotional moment. So there it is, the Speyside Way complete. Admittedly, some of the emotion might have been lost in that reconstruction, but unfortunately due to technical errors, we didn't manage to film the exact moment of crossing the line on the summer trip. It's a long story. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the series. If you did, please drop a like on the video or leave a comment. And if you didn't, then drop a dislike and leave a comment. It's a democracy. Either way, subscribe to the channel for more travel, trekking and transport, and I will see you soon.